on the latest Bigfoot Collectors Club, The Other Side. It's a Bigfoot Book Club episode where we discuss the survival horror slash Bigfoot thriller Devolution by Max Brooks. Also in this episode, the truth about eating on camera. Visit patreon.com slash Bigfoot Collectors Club for more info. Bigfoot Collectors Club presents Terrifying Tales from Zombie Bigfoot's Cryptid Crypt! <laughs> I know a ghost story about you! Hey everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of Bigfoot Collectors Club, the show where we talk to amazing guests about their personal paranormal history and share stories of high strangeness. I'm your host, Michael McMillan. With me always is your other host, Bryce Johnson. And our supernatural producer, Riley Bray. Zombie Bigfoot's cryptic crypt remains yeah. open. Yeah. So there it goes. Open all up that month crypt. long, we will be focusing on stories of high strangeness with a horror twist, a spooky tale of high strangeness, <laughs> if you will. And to help us celebrate this month long event, we have brand a brand new t shirt available right now. In the uh, in our campfire shop over on wearecampfire.media, it's an awesome new zombie Bigfoot t shirt illustrated Man. by uh, artist Tyler Bentz, who's also a listener of the show. I've been following this guy on Instagram, he's a brilliant artist, he's he's getting into comics and graphic novels, and uh, this shirt. Design we have is, outdone ourselves with this one. Oh man, one. This, this, yeah. this one is great. It's inspired by the old EC comics, you know, like Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror. Um, I am in love with this design. So uh, head over to wearecampfire.media and click shop to find that amazing new shirt. Plus, more in our merch shop. I gotta say, Wet Hot Alien Summer was my favorite thing yeah. we've done so far. And then when I finally saw this image today, because also Michael wouldn't let us see this until it was done. And <laughs> totally. But this, I, I was so floored. I had to take a break from work to just be like, you guys, <laughs> are you serious? So I, showed it to, I showed it to my son, and they both my kids usually bust my chops about anything. Uh, but Walker was like, all right, I got to get me one of these. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's how good it is. Yeah, it's awesome. awesome. We uh, I spent a lot of time with Tyler over the past few weeks consulting, kicking, you know, passing ideas back and forth. Of course, uh, each of the old Vault of Horror comics would have, you know, the little circles featuring the Crypt Keeper and the Old Witch and the Vault Keeper. And uh, so we spent a lot of time figuring out who we would be in those situations. So I'm the high stranger. And Bryce is the true believer. He looks like a man in black. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Bryce is, of course, the ultra terrestrial. Riley. Little, uh, Riley, yes, sorry, is is an ultra terrestrial. A little uh, uh, nod to his role over on uh, our Patreon on the other side. So I'm very, very happy with the shirt. Uh, Tyler crushed it. So I encourage all of you guys to check it out. It's, of course, you can you can preview it on our Instagram at Bigfoot Collectors Club check it out okay guys enough shop talk because today uh we've got two amazing guests for you uh one of them currently stars in nbc superstore as well as she-ra and the princess of power yes. and the other is a self-proclaimed part-time researcher and internet sleuth together they form the co-host team behind the brand new podcast true crime and cocktails unsolved mystery edition Please give a warm Club Scout salute to Lauren Ash and Christy Oxborough. Yeah! Hi, guys. Ooh. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us, ladies. <laughs> thank you so much for having us. This is awesome. It was so nice of you to just sit quietly for so long while we <laughs> rambled on about our cool shirts. Um, Look, we're, we we're Canadians, so we're very comfortable <laughs> remaining silent for as long as anyone tells us to be. Amazing. If, if I would forgotten to introduce you guys, you would have just sat quietly through an entire episode. <laughs> you think that's a joke, yeah. but it's true. <laughs> Um, I want to talk about who you guys are, your relationship, and and a little bit about your uh, your podcast before we get into everything. Great. So uh, I heard your sisters, but then your cousins. Is it, are you sisters <laughs> or are you cousins? 
Listen, uh, this is Lauren talking, by the way. We're, our voices are very similar, so just to get things out of the way, just to be able to <laughs> equal, easily identify us. We are right. we're cousins by birth, but we're sisters by life, um, which is the truth. We're very close, and I'm an only child, so I like to uh, glom on to feeling like I'm not left out of the sibling game. So that's the story there. Works for I, I do have siblings. But I like Lauren better. <laughs> so I'm uh, I'm okay with admitting that. To I love it. Many people. So yeah. that's I mean, where we're at. We've just met the two of you, and I wish you. I, I love my 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 cousins and my sister. I would be happy to include you in the ranks as well. The both of you. Uh, you guys are obviously into true crime and one of our favorite shows, Unsolved Mystery, uh, Unsolved Mysteries. Um, what can you tell us about the the podcast coming up? So we kind of discovered, as again, we didn't grow up in the same household as we are not sisters by blood. We discovered recently that we both, as she, far too young of a ch- of children, <laughs> secretly <laughs> would watch the original Unsolved Mysteries series. Wow. And so when these new ones came out, we both kind of just had this realization that we loved it and then found out that we both had this kind of history with it. And we thought, hey, why not uh, do some deep dives? And then Christy, I, I mean, I'll big her up. She won't. She's too humble. She's a Canadian. But she she is this unbelievable researcher. And she has managed to find so much information about all of the different cases uh, that are on this first chunk of the, the Netflix Unsolved Mysteries, the new episodes, that it's been such a fun journey getting to do this. And so we're, we're so excited that, uh, that this thing that kind of came out of a random text conversation is now a new show coming October 13th. There, I got the plug oh, in there. That, that was nice. That's that incredible. Nice. <laughs> Christy, we're going to want to talk to you a little bit about, I mean, cause I hear, you know, you do a lot of the heavy lifting in, in the research, uh, uh, part of the show how, how how did that come about and how and how do you kind of tackle the researching of the, of these subjects oh i'm going to be honest i am just nosy at heart you know <laughs> and so just any excuse to like pry into people's lives is just what i'm here for <laughs> and uh she asked me about this uh the first episode we did and I was like yeah I could I could look into stuff and I just started with a quick google and next thing I know I'm like deep diving into like who's registered to vote wow and, like it just I can't stop I just Whoa. I live for it yeah you're getting really down to the nitty gritty. I, I'm I'm currently watching. I had already seen the UFO episode, of course. That was like the first one I watched. But I'm actually currently watching the the first season right now. I'm about six episodes in, maybe. Mm. Um, and one of them, the 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 the, the murder in Gardner, Kansas, uh, or near Gardner. That that's like a half hour from where I grew up in oh, Kansas. Crazy. So it was really weird to see that episode. I was like, oh, I know where all of these places are it's super super creepy i mean what an amazing thing too because i i absolutely loved that show growing up and i and i've caught a few of the episodes just like michael and already just being familiar with some of the accounts i was like oh man they left out a lot of stuff i mean they you know they can only fit so much into an an hour program so uh, um i'm really excited to hear what you ladies sort of bring because we always like to hear some of the details that a lot of people like to leave out i mean we think you know that is really where the the true story lives so i think it's such a great idea what you guys have come across yeah and basically what 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 we're both hoping for and what has happened is that in every episode there's some reveal where i end up going what like that's (laughs) the goal i think that christy she hasn't told me that that's her goal but it really feels like every episode she's like i gotta have one or two bombshells to try and get the the gasp response you know of course oh really i just i want to shock her (laughs) <laughs> and I want I want to I want to make a handmade map. <laughs> those, are, those are kind of uh, what I dream of. Yeah, you're, you're, her commitment to maps is also really something. <laughs> what do you mean handmade map? You mean uh, you are drawing the map, trying to retrace the mystery, or or someone else in the story has drawn a map and you've uncovered the map that they've the, the one of the characters has drawn. Oh, I very rarely use a second party map. Um, <laughs> Spoken like a true cartographer. <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, I just, I don't know. I, I mean, I do, I just like to visualize things 
And I know a lot of people do. And then it came the problem of, well, it's a podcast. It's not exactly visual. So I'm like, well, I guess we're recording those and posting them somewhere. Yeah, Instagram. Because <laughs> these maps have to be seen, you know? I mean, for example, if people are familiar with the Unsolved Mysteries uh, series, and this isn't a spoiler, um, but spoiler alert, our show is kind of a spoiler. So just know that we talk about what happens in the episodes. <laughs> it's like a but recap the- show. Exactly. In the 13 minutes episode, uh, there is a suspect who claimed to go to a specific gas station at a specific time. And this was part of his alibi. So Christy went to a map of the area and then marked on all the gas stations in the area to prove how many opportunities he had to go to different gas stations that he didn't need to go to this one that was super far away. So that's an example of like how the map skills really are used for good. Man. Oh, I mean, it's just like a really quick just screenshot of the house that they have in the show. <laughs> then you go through white pages to all of the addresses they've ever lived. Google <laughs> those until you find the right one that matches. And then just a quick gas station search. It's just like 20 minutes of your time. <laughs> Christy, you got to be th- you got to you must be happy that this new series is using so many overhead drone shots. That's become like a very popular shot. I feel like going back to making of uh, of a murderer in Netflix like those like just Oh, bird, bird's eye view of just houses passing underneath you. So that, that's that got to be helpful for this map making. Oh, it uh, it makes my job a little easier, Michael. <laughs> do you ever like, <laughs> like, do you ever like for, with all my old treasure maps and like that, that I used to make for like, you know, uh, arts and crafts, we used to like wrinkle them up and then de-wrinkle them and give them like a nice patina. Do you ever do you gotta that? You burn the edges. Yeah, burn oh, the yeah. edges. Gotta you burn know? the edges. <laughs> like I a mean, treasure map. I love totally, that. Yeah. I mean, I wish I could say I'm that level. My concern is I want to make sure that people can see it. I need, I need to <laughs> make sure they, they get a clear view. You no, know, that if, makes sense. If, if you're they just want it to look mystery. nice, I'll I'll burn whatever. But if they <laughs> if they want the if 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 they want the legit information, I got to make that crystal clear. You know. Amazing. Christy, I, I think we could have used you during our uh, Roswell series. That oh we did. yeah, totally. Oh, used I your help. Love that. I got to ask you guys uh, now, whenever I'm watching Unsolved Mysteries, I think about this. I'm like, do the true crime fans like the episodes about UFOs and that, you know, the more paranormal? Uh, because I feel like, you know, this new series is good, but I need a, I need a few more paranormal episodes mm, in there. Great question. Yeah, that is a great question. You know, it's interesting because I have an extensive background in a little something I like to call the X Files, and so I, uh, oh, nice. when I say background, <laughs> I mean deep obsession. So for me, I agree with you. I like some of the paranormal stuff, but I will say it is interesting doing this podcast because it was interesting um, speaking about, and I'm sure Christy can speak to the, the researching more, but it, it is a very different thing. And it really, I, I'm curious how a lot of the true crime fans feel about that episode in there, because I really like that it was in there. I like that it's like mixing it up. And that was always part of the original series, I feel like. But it is a very different thing, because when you're talking about a, a you know, a grisly murder, um, that's dealt dealing with like very hard facts and something like, you know, the UFO episode, we're really speculating about, you know, what exactly this could even be as opposed to just like who done it or where are they, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it is a lot harder to research when it's aliens. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, and you, you're quickly getting into like, that's a real rabbit hole as we know, where you're like, okay, I don't, I have to really kind of sift through all of this and figure out, uh, what's bullshit and, and what's not. But, uh, I, am I'm excited. I I definitely want to listen to this podcast. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And it's a nice impetus to, uh, finish the, the series as well. Um, Keep keep watching unsolved mysteries. Um, Listen, they I, should be paying us. Netflix, send our <laughs> send your checks. Seriously, giving um, you free advertising. I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about your backgrounds and the X Files obsession and your thoughts on the paranormal. But before we do that, we actually have some basic news. <laughs> All right, yeah. All right, this story actually came to me. I I glanced it uh, surfing through the net uh, yesterday, but this was sent in by one of our listeners uh, from Scotland who says, 
Hi, guys. News here in Scotland of a 33-foot sonar contact in the Loch. And, of course, we know what Loch they're talking about, don't we? Loch Ness, the famous Loch Ness monster. Yeah, okay. And he says, by the way, it's it's Loch shouldn't be pronounced Loch, L-O-C-K, but like you are speaking Klingon. And he writes, Log, like L O G H H H H H. Which I don't know how to pronounce that either, but I, I really like this. He says, to get the authentic dialect. Okay. Uh, love the podcast, Graham. So here's the story it's from Daily Record UK. And uh, a Loch Ness monster caught on sonar by tour boat 500 feet below surface of water. Not a Loch Ness Monster. I misread that. Just Loch Ness Monster. Um, So here we go. The most compelling evidence of the existence of Nessie has been recorded more than 500 feet below the surface of the loch. Monster hunters are astounded by the clarity of the image of of uh, of an object estimated to be 33 feet long. Although an expert said it may just be a shoal of fish. Hmm. The sonar image was captured by Cruise Loch Ness director Ronald McKenzie while he was skippering a catamaran on Wednesday afternoon. The 45 year, 45, the, excuse me, the 49 year old said it was a bit of a drink day and we only had 12 <laughs> passengers. We were at our halfway point off Invermotion when we turned around. The water is 189 meters deep there. And I don't even know if I pronounced some of those words right, but the passengers were quite excited because we had just spotted a sea eagle. But then I saw on the sonar something more. What the fuck is a sea eagle? I don't know, but that's cool. I don't know what a sea is. Is that like a cryptid? That's a bard over the sea if I ever heard one. So he basically goes on to say that the contact lasted 10 seconds while the boat passed over. And he says, I've been on the lock since I was 16 years old, and I have never seen anything like it. We have a real state of art sonar on the new boat. It doesn't lie. It captures what's there. Now I'm sort of slipping into bad Irish. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so that's pretty cool news. Uh, leading sonar expert Craig Wallace described the image as 100% genuine. The marine robotics senior application specialist said, I do believe large sturgeon do enter Loch Ness. It may be a sturgeon or a small shoal of fish, but it is certainly fascinating and interesting uh, and interesting contact Without a doubt, it further adds to the debate about Nessie. Um, and finally, Nessie expert Steve Feltham, who has set a world record for the longest vigil of looking for the Loch Ness Monster, said Ronald <laughs> Sonar image was the most compelling evidence of the existence of the legendary creature he had seen. He said, it's extremely exciting. I've known Ronald McKenzie for 30 years. He's a Highland lad who does not seek publicity and shies away from the fanciful Nessie theories. Uh, of course, sure. But he also, I just need to point out, has a cruise boat that's basically looking <laughs> for the monster. It seems like Uh, he's not somebody who would cry wolf or Nessie, but within seven minutes of getting the sonar contact, he messaged me. I definitely think Nessie is an animal, and I think we are getting closer to finding the answer. So promising news. We're we're having a seesaw of emotions when it comes to Nessie this year. Uh, They for a while, people were saying it's just a giant eel because of the eDNA tests. And then we had a video uh, earlier this summer. And now we have the sonar image. So Nessie's making a comeback. Good for you, Nessie. (laughs) (laughs) Or possibly a Nessie. Do we think it's possible that there could be more than one like that? There's like a granddaddy, you know, whatever it is, and its genes pass on to another giant one after it. Do we think that's possible? You know, unlike Bigfoots, Nessie seems to be sort of uh, one creature in particular. Yeah. Although, you know, uh, lots of bodies of water, uh, even even some lakes here in the States, have claimed their own sort of sea monster. So, like Champlain? Yeah, like Lake Champlain and Champy? stuff. But, but yeah, no, it's it's strange. With, the, with Nessie, it seems to just be like, that's the one. Um, which is interesting, but I I got to think like there's got to be a lifespan on this creature. So and if it's died, why isn't it washed up on shore? All right, now it's I'm paranormal man. How many times we got to go over this? It's well, an apparition <laughs> summoned by <laughs> Alistair Crowley. Come on. I mean, I guess when you think about it, a turtle or a tortoise they can live to be like what, like 110 or, or oh, older. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, no, I mean it's only been around since the 30s, so right. we're not even 100 years uh, into it yet. Yeah. yeah. So after 
after a hundred years. years from now, it's yeah. There you go. Wash up on the shore. Exactly. <laughs> She's got That's a long terrifying. white beard and wrinkled skin <laughs> and a little yeah. cane next there's to like, it. There's a lot I don't know, but I'm pretty sure I know Nessie's body is never going to wash up on shore. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to hold you to those words. Okay, Lauren and Christy, we like to ask all of our guests, what is your personal paranormal history? You were into the X-Files. Has anything strange ever happened to you that you cannot explain? Oh, I mean, so many things. Uh, I think much like, you know, they say on the show, I want to believe. So I feel like I feel like some of us are just open to it and therefore maybe have more experiences than others. But I I think the story for me and this is like oddly morbid, but I want to preface it by saying that it's it brings me peace. And I can't remember, Christy, if I've even told you this, but our grandmother uh oh. She passed and she told me, she's like, Lauren, when before she died, she was like, when I die, I'm going to come and visit you. And I was like, awesome. And I was living in this apartment and it was extremely small in downtown Toronto. And I was walking in this very kind of narrow hallway. And on one side was a sliding closet door and inside was a washer dryer because having laundry in your apartment is not crazy in Toronto. I know that a lot of other big cities don't have that luxury. Uh, I'm not a baller at this time is my point. But anyway, Mm -hmm. so I walk through and uh, nothing out of the ordinary. And then I walk back and there's a huge puddle of water in the middle of the floor. And there's no kind of it's not like it's pouring from somewhere. It's like it literally just appeared. And I just kind of wrote it off. I was like, that's weird, but whatever. And the next day, the same thing. I walk down this hallway. There's nothing. I turn. When I come back, there's a huge pool of liquid laundry detergent in the middle of the floor. And there's no bottle turned over. There's no stream coming from any. It's literally like it just appeared there. And then, and I swear to God, and people think this is a lie. I swear to God, I have this radio which at the the time was also like an ipod dock type thing um but there was no batteries in it and you had to plug it in to use it it was completely not plugged into the wall and it turned on and it started going and it was just like on the radio again not plugged into a wall no batteries in it people have explained to me about how this is possible i don't want to listen to that the point is is that (laughs) is that at that point i was like i think this is my grandmother that's three days in a row i feel like i've been given these messages and so then i just assumed that she was there all the time and i again like this was nice for me i i thought that it was like lovely that i i feel like that was her coming back to me but that's my like most prolific kind of paranormal story for sure and the that detergent sure that works, yeah. The, the detergent puddle was in the same place that exact, the puddle the day before had been. Exact same place. That is very strange. Isn't that wild? Was she like big on like washing laundry and stuff? Or did you, <laughs> is that something you guys shared? <laughs> you know, I often I justify that by saying like they often say if you really get into this that it's like there's certain things that are easier for them to move than others uh-huh. if you believe in um, you know those kinds of things. Right. So we, I just kind of talk about that. Ghosts that. exist on this show. So yeah, yeah, we've already yeah I realize now like why yeah. am I trying to like <laughs> why am I trying to. <laughs> To tell you guys, like, I promise you that people believe in this stuff. Like, what's wrong with me? I feel like my mom would, like, let me know she's there by, like, ironing my shirts and, like, underwear and, and clothes. She irons Underwear? Every- no, not mine. I haven't. Listen, I have not lived with my mother for uh, over 40 years now. But she is an iron queen. She loves to iron. She would iron and- your underwear? I think I'm a- No, I. Yeah. No, you, no. You grew up fancy. That's pretty that's nice. <laughs> Christy, does it? Um, I just want to check in with you emotionally to see how you feel about <laughs> the fact that your grandma totally uh, snubbed Visited you. Visited her, the not me. Yeah. yeah. How's that? How do you feel? Uh, I mean, look, I'm I'm happy I didn't have to clean up any messes. I guess <laughs> uh, I'm terrified to think I've been in that apartment and yeah. knowing that there's a presence, but I wasn't told there was a presence before I entered the building. That's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it is Nana, you know? Yeah, I get it. But so you, I mean, you're scared nice. of ghosts. Ghosts oh, scare you. I'm, I'm scared of a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why true crime is so crazy that I'm obsessed with it. But I, I'm, I'm quick to scare, I guess, mm. is what it is. I hear the smallest noise and I'm like, well, someone's in my house. And it's like, 
well, yeah, it's called one of your kids. Settle down. You know, like <laughs> it, it could be anything. But in my mind, I'm like, well, they've broken in. And it's like, well, it's one o'clock on a Wednesday. I doubt it. But. Well, listen, that's a prime time. Don't get me started. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> have you that have you ever have you ever experienced anything that you would consider to be of the paranormal? Um, I mean, I've been grappling this, with this for about three decades. <laughs> wow. So, so when I was about seven, um, we lived in a small town in the prairies, specifically Manitoba for any Canadians. Um, and I was walking home from school and across the street from the school, there's like three houses and then an alleyway. So I get to that alleyway and suddenly there's a kid there about my age, kid I've never seen before in my life. Couldn't even tell you if it's a boy or a girl. Um, it was like the eighties mushroom cut. So could go either way. <laughs> uh, so I see this kid and I don't remember any conversation that we had. I just remember that this kid is like, we should go check out the woods. Oh. There's like a few blocks away, there's like the edge of town and there's a big set of woods. So I was like, that seems like a great idea. So we head over to these woods. We start walking through and there is like a hill and built into the hill is kind of like a big fountain made out of like really dark, almost black stone bricks. And the fountain is filled with blood and there's just dead rats around what? the rim of this fountain. And I'm staring at this thinking, what the fuck is this? And I turn to the kid and the kid is gone. So I'm like, this is insane. What I should go hell? home. This is so creepy. So I head up the hill. My house is only a couple blocks away. I start heading home and I see my mom's car just like speeding out of nowhere. So my mom sees me, hits the brakes, gets out of the car in the middle of the street, comes over and just freaks out on me i'm like i've been like 10 minutes what's up she's like you've been missing for hours are you uh, 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 uh. and so i got i got punished <laughs> but <laughs> because in her mind i ran away oh, or something there and i mean so i'm talking like 80s here. punished like i had to go to bed without supper i got a spank all of that classic stuff that parents can't do now. 80s punished. 80s punished. <laughs> full 80s punished. Amazing. Canadian uh, but, 80s punished. Right? And she was sorry about it. That's, <laughs> that's uh, what makes it Canadian. Right. Uh, but yeah, I, to this day, I don't know what that was. I never went back in those woods. I don't know if that fountain was really there or wow. just something Whoa. that my brain put in there because I couldn't explain what was really there. But I was gone for hours. And it That's was not wild. hours to me. And I've been tossing with this for years. And wow. last year I had a dream that reminded me of it. And I woke my husband up in like the middle of the night. And I was like, oh my God, babe, I think we should go back there. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I was like, okay, look, I've Googled it. It's only like seven hours. I have yeah. a map. Yeah. I have yeah. a map. Right? Exactly. It's a map. I, was, I was like, I need to go see that spot again. And he was like, this is the ri most ridiculous thing. And I was like, but not the most ridiculous thing I've ever said, oh which is true, but that has definitely creeped me out for like 30 years. <laughs> you think uh, that uh, fountain would still be there? I don't know. I'm just, I can't even figure out if it was there. Oh my, well, okay. Totally. Before, before we go further, what was the dream about? Um, I dreamt that I was walking through a forest and I saw that same fountain. Wow. Dude, I mean, wild. have you it's, heard it's this insane. story, Lauren? You know what? I think you have told me this, haven't you? I think so. Yeah, I remember because... you telling me this. Um, but it is such an interesting thing, uh, again, like with the lost time, which I always yeah. think is very interesting. Totally. And also, you know, I, 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 maybe, I mean, listen, I apologize because I feel like I started this by saying that, you know, I'm open to these things, so they happen to me. Yeah. But maybe <laughs> we're the spooky sisters is what I'm learning here. And maybe... Yeah. Well, both. there's a new hashtag for yeah. the show. Yeah. <laughs> but being led into the forest, too, by a, possibly a discarnate entity, that's, I mean, that's some classic horrifying shit you're you're hitting a lot of uh a lot of kind of <laughs> cornerstones of high strangeness here christy i mean this is not our normal uh personal paranormal story well i'm glad that my decades of horror have brought you joy <laughs> for a brief moment i just well, want to know like this kid like i see this kid in my head wow. but i've like it the only time i've ever seen that kid was in that moment 
Right. So I don't think like the kids seemed about my age, but they didn't go to my school. And it was a small enough town that it was like, that's the school you go to. So, so this, it's like, who the hell is this kid? This reminds me of a couple of things. One, the Deborah Jordan Cobble alien abduction story, and specifically the TV movie Invaders that was based on that book by Bud Hopkins, mm. um, where intruders, sorry, I apologize, intruders. Where there's, uh, she's being regressed hypnotically and flashes back to when she was a little girl, uh, being taken into the woods, led into the woods by a little boy who pointed out a UFO and she experienced an abduction, mm. an alien abduction. So it kind of reminded me of that, but it also reminds me of the fairy folklore stories of. Uh, the Fae leading children off into the woods or yep. under a, because the other thing you said that you mentioned there was a hill. Yeah. And in folklore and fairy folklore, when someone is taken by the Fae, they're often led under a hill mm-hmm. and where they will uh, encounter other Fae folk may in this, maybe the kid and, um, and that uh, oftentimes they'll be offered food or drink. And then when they are finally let go, if they're let go, they come home to find out that hours and hours have passed. Like the, the Jakob Jakobson story that we did, Bryce, remember, you know, he, yeah. he was, you know, out wandering around the woods, found this old big house with strange little people in it. And then when he came home, he had been missing for like three days. Yeah. Um, oh wow. Yeah, and that was yeah, like in the seventeen takes on a different it, Time takes on a different meaning and a different movement in, in in fairy lore. And and you know there has been research and and done that's like maybe this stuff is connected. These alien abductions, missing time, and and some of these you know uh, fairy folkloric stories. But there's also you know that's that's a great reminder you of you that Michael. It also reminds me of sort of some of this missing 411 stuff that I read about from David Polites. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but it's about people who go missing in the woods and it's always surrounding strange, strange circumstances. Like, you know, like they're like, they're almost being led somewhere and it always, it's always near water and it's always in the woods and man, you're just lucky you came back. The rats are so creepy. The rats are so strange. Now, now that reminds me of Pied Piper like- too. Did they is am I me? Like is the real me there and I'm some doppelganger <laughs> jackass? Oh, <man. laughs> That's just I don't this know. life. Christine, we can't answer I, that. I think the answer is yes. I think you are <laughs> okay, I think you can this, answer that. <laughs> yeah, I think you're a wow. doppelganger. You're a changeling child. Well, oh my it gosh. would have been great if they'd left the uh Massive anxiety with the original <laughs> Christine. Oh my God. That's fine. That's you, fine. You know what though? I think that when the world comes to a place where we can like freely travel again, I think that we should go and Most go definitely. back to this place. I'll go with you. Be I, careful. I think, oh, I need hand holding a hundred percent. Oh careful. no, wait. I heard a warning here of be careful. Back. Do you They're guys calling... think we shouldn't revisit this place? I mean, uh, I'm totally down for you to do it, but I do think that if it's it might be contacting you through your dreams. And and calling you back to finish the job, so just be careful. Wow. Oh well, that's Ooh. fucking terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a little less on this road trip. Yeah, now I, I kind of think that I'm rethinking the road trip offer now. It's feeling a little bit like maybe this isn't the move. Yeah. I I think we should go, and we'll tell you if a fountain is there because they're not oh interested in God. us. Michael, uh, how do you know, how well, do you know they're you not know calling us. you through her? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, this exactly. is all about right. Michael all along. You know, <laughs> no. there is one way you could go back without actually going back, and that is through the process known as hypnotic regression. Have you ever mm. thought about doing something like that? I have thought about it, but I'm too chicken shit to do it. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. <laughs> because I'm terrified of who knows what, like. I, yeah. I guess I'm terrified of the truth is what I'm saying. Yeah. That missing time thing. I was not expecting to hear. That is so crazy. Yeah. I uh, swear to God to this day, it was maybe 20 minutes. And to you said me, it was like a was, black stone My mom stone said fountain? it was like two, three hours. Wow. Yeah. The, it w- They were like really dark gray and they had like black on them, almost like 
Mm-hmm. Um, like how castles get that almost like mold Brimstone. kind of situation or whatever. That's sure. not yeah. good. That is. Oh, not... that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say we're not going back here. <laughs> <laughs> that's like Halloween she like some old fairy Sith magic like that in the blood in the fountain. That is wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just dead rats like this fountain stuck out of the hill almost like a bathroom sink you know kind of and the rats were Mm -hmm. all along the rim of this thing and their necks were all like at a weird angle and so it was terrifying wow i mean this truly is a terrifying terrifying tale from zombie bigfoot's cryptid crypt (laughs) yeah Yeah. we got the right guess this this i was just gonna say we really (laughs) brought the goods here gentlemen so (laughs) well done well done just the rats and you didn't try to show your mom the fountain or anything like no i was too busy getting in trouble for running away 80s punish michael there's no like show me what you saw it's like get your ass over here now yeah Yeah. oh it was like a get out of the car grab me by like the ear and pull me to the car and like a what were you thinking and i'm like i just there was a kid. I just, and she was like, yeah, not hearing it. Wow. Oh, this is so to wow. this day, I guarantee if I ask her about it, she'll just be like, oh, I don't know. You oh, know, yeah. she just has no memory of it. But if I'm this sure happened that- now, now when, when, you know, you know, 2020 punishments, it would be like, there'd be deep therapy. There'd be some sort of like police sketch artist hired. Like, I feel like yeah. it would be a total different ball game. To- You're yeah, going to lose your iPhone the- for, well, okay, I'm going to give it back to you, but on the condition <laughs> That you don't do that again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that kid would get, like, called a bully, you know, and then, like, yeah, it's just uh, the parents of that kid would be tracked down, and then they'd be, all be arrested. This yeah, is, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's terrifying. I, I don't know. This is so, I'm really stumped here, and I'm... I'm oh, well, that I'm, makes me feel better. You yeah. know what? I'm really glad I went first. Can I just say that? Like my, <laughs> yeah. My, Listen, like, the laundry detergent like, was oh, spooky I, too. I, saw some I know. What? I know. Yeah, oh it just feels God. less, you know, daunting. I guess at this point. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> maybe wow. maybe you could bring laundry detergent to the fountain and fill it with laundry detergent. Maybe yeah. that's the key. Michael I'm, said not to go back. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm I didn't stretching say don't. here. I'm I stretching. said be careful. Just be go. Just prep before you go in there. Like, oh, I have a will. Okay, great. <laughs> that's <laughs> not going to help you. Well, oh I mean, God. someone's got to clean up all those rats and blood. Oh you know, I mean, oh, uh, Jesus. someone's got to do it. Jeez. Well, I'm going to dream about it tonight. Now. Yeah, so am so I. That's great. I think you we need, all might actually. <laughs> yeah, you need like a rat fountain task force to go in there with you. Like, you need to get the cast of Predator. And bring them in there with you, just like locked and loaded, ready to take on whatever comes at you. I'm telling you, the safest way to do it is through like a regression session in the safety of a professional in in a, in a secure office or somewhere comfortable, and have him or her walk you through the most minute details of what you experience. Because even if you went back today, uh, who's to know you would find anything? You probably more than likely wouldn't. And who's to know if that fountain is there or not? You know, and even if it is there, it, you you probably still wouldn't get a lot more information. You know, I mean, you might get some clue here and there, but I mean, the, you're, I think the best way forward, if you're ever interested in finding out exactly what took place, and if you did really experience missing time, then you know, I mean, that is that is prime territory for a hypnotic regression. I think that's good well, advice. I mean, my God, I mean, I'm interested, but also just. Throwing back to terrified. Totally yeah. get it. Yep. hundred yeah. percent. Just like me right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, there's no way we're going to top that. So I think we should move on to a game that we love to play with all of our guests. I'm going to go down a list of phenomena. Is it phenomena or phenomenon? I never I know wh- which is the plural. They both work, right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I, I think know. LL Cool J uses both. Uh, well, <laughs> I think you're the, right. <laughs> whatever LL like does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that works for me. All right. So I'm going to go down a list of phenomena. And uh, and if you're open to it, you're going to say believe it. If you're not open to it, you're going to say bullshit. This is a game that we like to call bullshit or believe it. And of course, this is the Halloween edition. Uh, so Lauren, Christy, yeah, on your marks, get set, ghosts, believe, believe, UFOs, 
uh, believe <laughs> I, I'm more bullshit than anything. And and just because I'm a stickler, it's it's believe it. Or Sorry, excuse believe me. It or yes, believe it. Believe it. Right. Believe right. it. I can feel you, you think believe. that on that first believe, Michael. <laughs> I, I almost let it go, and then I couldn't. I, couldn't I just second guessed myself. I second guessed myself. It was my fault. I was like, oh, Dude, is, you get is it. it you get once is a freebie. You get it wrong twice, and I yell at you. All and right. that's fair. Eighty yep. style. Yeah. Eighty style. I mean, Eighty <laughs> style. Both of you. Hey, just I want to make sure that you understand that because of this, you're. You both have to go to bed without supper tonight. Oh, okay? man. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> All right. here We're getting back into it now. Yeah. Bigfoot. Bullshit. Bullshit. Vampires. Bullshit. Bullshit. Shadow people. Oh, believe Bullshit. it. Bullshit. Loch Ness oh. Monster. Bullshit. Bullshit. Little gray aliens. Bullshit. <sighs> believe it. Werewolves. Bullshit. Believe it. Parallel universes. Believe it. Believe it. <laughs> Zombies. Bullshit. Bullshit. Shapeshifters. Believe it. Believe it. Heaven. Believe it. Believe it. Hell. Believe it. Believe it. Yeti. Bullshit. Bullshit. Astrology. Believe it. Bullshit. ESP. <laughs> ESP. Believe it. Believe it. Witches. Believe, believe it. it. Oh, they're a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Demons. Believe it. Bullshit. Atlantis. Bullshit. Believe it. Mothman. Bullshit. Bullshit. Reincarnation. Believe, believe it. Believe it. Rat fountains. <laughs> oh, that was dirty. <laughs> I believe it. I believe I'm it. I'm just going to say believe just to piss him off. Uh, <laughs> right. well, no breakfast oh, for you tomorrow morning. No breakfast. Uh, well done. I, I got to say, I enjoy when you guys would contradict one another. Uh, yeah. Which, uh, 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 I'm trying to go back over the list. My here. favorite was Atlantis because you said different answers but had the same inflection. <laughs> yeah. And I like yeah, let's talk about no Atlantis. Bigfoot, but yes on werewolves. Mm. Yeah, you know, it, that's an interesting and a really great observation. I think for me, <laughs> I love that my dog barked at that moment, by the way. Um, I, I think know. that for me, I believe more that there could be like a species of wolf, dog, that kind of thing that that could, you know, and there's also, you know, like the 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 wolf boys and, and stuff like that you see the totally. old pictures of and stuff. I believe that that's more plausible than, you know... Um, the Bigfoot one is kind of nuanced to me, but I, for some reason, I believe more in a werewolf than I do in a Bigfoot. I know that sounds funny, but it, a werewolf right. seems like completely plausible to me for some That's, reason. That falls within the parameters of this game. That's fine. <laughs> um, now, which which one of you was into Atlantis and which one of you wasn't? I, uh, I, I was believe. not. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. I think I hesitated because I'm a not believe on Atlantis and I would have been more forthcoming and like quicker about it. Uh, but Lauren and I have a history with a building <laughs> called Atlantis. And so I think my brain went there and thought, oh, is she going to say believe it in like a really sweet nod to me? And she did. <laughs> it probably wasn't to me. But then I was just like, oh, bullshit. Like I couldn't override myself. So I think that was my hesitation. But and tr truthfully, my hesitation was I was thinking about that bar Atlantis I that we have this story from. Yeah. So I think that that was what our shared moment was because it was like oh that's a funny thing and and then it was like get back in the game believe it or bullshit you know <laughs> well yeah. we got to hear about it now so what's your history with atlantis the bar oh, oh this, this is a bad story for that. <laughs> this isn't a great story uh no. we were young uh, i want to say like 19 and and remember the drinking age in canada is 19 or, or it <laughs> wasn't in, in ontario at the time where we were this was in a very small town where i grew up and there was a new bar called atlantis it had a sunken dance floor and very <sighs> ornate statues like 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 it was atlantis or what your you know your kind of perception of what atlantis would be but then at the same time they were selling like dollar shots out of test tubes you know what i mean like that kind of vibe <laughs> very atlantean very yeah. atlantean <laughs> um, ancient atlantean technology yes yeah it's i mean again i don't know that i need to keep the story going this is embarrassing but <laughs> long story short there was a gentleman who was was he hitting on you or was he hitting on me i can't remember uh, he was hitting on me 
Yes. Um, because you saved the day. Right. She was not interested. And so me, in my, like, grand, drunken 19-year-old brain, uh, decided that the way to get this guy to stop hitting on Christy because she wasn't interested was for me to kiss her. And then it'd be like, <laughs> we're a couple. And I, I know this is going to shock you, but this this man who was in his early 20s was not deterred yeah, by the two women kissing a... in front of him. So... <laughs> That's a big green light for some people. Yeah, it was it Whether was really questionable. <laughs> but so you can understand how I know how to turn this drunk asshole off. Let's make out. <laughs> I know. Listen, it wasn't a make out. It was a closed mouth kiss. I need to make oh that clear. But um, but yes, I do think that that's obviously why anytime we hear the word Atlantis, we have a flinch. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, too now- funny. I guess uh, we know hilarious. why I guess we know why Atlantis sunk. Yeah, there uh, you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, it's time for this week's terrifying tale. All right, everyone. It's time to open up Zombie Bigfoot's Cryptid Crypt for this week's terrifying tale, narrated by Bryce Johnson. You know, I love this time of year. When the air becomes crisp, the summer heat slowly dissipates and an air of enchantment pervades the senses. With Halloween on the horizon, my mind tends to move to things that go bump in the night. And one of my favorite things to do around this time is to make some popcorn, turn down all the lights, kick up my feet and throw on a scary movie. A really great scary movie can haunt my imagination days after the fact, mess with my sleep and remind me that I am not as in control of my environment as I like to think I am. And so as part of our terrifying tales of zombie Bigfoot's cryptid crypt, I will be examining three popular, albeit nightmarish movies that have been plagued with rumors of actually being cursed. This is The Movies You Are About to Watch Are Cursed. The first movie on my list was written and produced by William Peter Blatty and directed by William Friedkin. It centers around a 12-year-old girl who is possessed by a mysterious demonic entity. With nowhere left to turn, her mother seeks the help of two priests to save her. How? By performing a sacred religious ritual known as an exorcism. I'm talking about none other than The Exorcist. Released in 1973, the film was nominated for 10 Academy Awards, including a Best Actress nomination for a very young Linda Blair, who played Regan, the little girl who becomes possessed. The film managed to take away two of those Oscars for Best Sound and Screenplay, and it still haunts audiences to this day, perhaps due in large part to the bizarre lengths in which director Friedkin went to bring authenticity to this dark tale of possession. You may not know it, but writer Bill Blatty set out to write a non-fiction account of an exorcism that happened to a 13-year-old boy at a psychiatric clinic in 1949, in which the boy's family members described telekinetic activity surrounding the child during his apparent possession. You know, shit flying across the room, strange discarnate voices, and a pervading sense of evil. The family was Lutheran. And they went through all the stages you see in the film. They went to doctors, clinics, and finally went back to their own pastor in the Lutheran church, who recommended they see a priest. Friedkin said, A priest named Father William Bodern reportedly performed the exorcism, with a younger priest named William Holleran assisting. When the exorcist was in the early stages of production, Friedkin met with the Reverend Robert J. Henley, the president of Georgetown, who secretly passed him an old red folder, with Halloran's diaries and other eyewitness accounts of the true life exorcism. So what justifies a film being cursed? Well, for starters, they all tend to have a pattern of injuries and sometimes even death. During filming, actress Ellen Burstyn, who played Regan's mother, was injured when the possessed Regan throws her to the ground. The take was actually used in the film, and the blood-curdling scream she lets out is completely genuine. The injury still bothers her to this day. Blair also injured her back when a rig on her bed mysteriously snapped, flinging her across the room. And the brother of Max von Sydow, who played Father Marin, died on the actor's first day of shooting. Jason Miller, who played Father Karras, 
His young son Jordan was struck and nearly killed by a man on a motorbike. The film was also the last role for actor Jack McGowan, who played the alcoholic filmmaker, filmmaker who meets a bad end. He finished the role but died from the flu before the movie was ever released. But probably the strangest of all was when a mysterious fire burned down the entire set except for Regan's bedroom, where the famous possession scene took place. Director Bill Friedkin recounts, One day at four in the morning, I got a call from a production manager, and he said, uh, Don't bother coming to work this morning. The set is burning to the ground right now as we speak. Investigators could only guess that a pigeon perhaps flew into a circuit box, but no one really knows for sure. <laughs> Many believed that the actual cellular film was cursed and that playing it through a projector was an invitation for demonic possession. Tele-evangelist Billy Graham stated, There's a power of evil in the film, in the fabric of the film itself. And to this very day, the Vatican houses a mysterious sect of Catholic priests trained in the art of exorcism and will be the first to tell you hands down that Satan and his legion are real so is their ability to possess. Next up, this little gem was written by Steven Spielberg and directed by Toby Hooper. Released on June 4th, 1982, it terrified audiences with the very real portrayal of a family and their home coming under attack from malevolent spirits. If you guessed Poltergeist, you'd be correct. Also nominated for several Academy Awards, Poltergeist was a critical and box office success and I can still remember the horrifying scene where the television turns on all by itself and beckons the little girl to sit and watch the static and commune with entities from the other side. From the German word poltern, which means to make a disturbance, and geist, meaning ghost, a poltergeist is just that, a noisy and disturbing ghost. But what the etymology of the word doesn't tell you is that a poltergeist can cause you and your loved ones bodily harm and in rare cases, even death. And speaking of, mysterious deaths would haunt the cast and crew of Poltergeist, including Heather O'Rourke, who played little Carol Ann, who freaked us the fuck out by announcing, They're here. Carol Ann was only 12 years old when she died of cardiac arrest and septic shock caused by a misdiagnosed intestinal issue. She died just several months before the release of Poltergeist 3, the final chapter in the original trilogy. Richard Lawson, who played Ryan, barely escaped death whilst aboard U.S. Air Flight 405 when it crashed into Flushing Bay in March of 92. A total of 27 people out of the 51 on board were killed. Lawson survived, but the event is yet another reason people claim the movie is cursed. And Lou Perryman, who played the small role of Pugsley in the original film, was 67 years old when a recently released ex-convict brutally murdered him in his own home with a fucking axe. If that's not creepy enough... You're, you're really coming down hard on the F-bombs, this, this story. <laughs> <laughs> I said that Bryce might have been a little angry while typing this up. Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> One of the most famous scenes features Joe Beth Williams' character Diane falling into the family's pool that is filled with skeletons. You might not know it, but those skeletons were actually real. The actors sure didn't. In my innocence and naivete, I assumed these were not real skeletons. <laughs> Williams said in an interview for TV Land, I assumed they were prop skeletons made out of plastic or rubber. I found out, as did the crew, that they were using real skeletons because it's far too expensive to make fake skeletons out of rubber. <laughs> Concerned about the use of real skeletons, as just mentioned, on the set of the first film, Native American actor and Poltergeist 2, the other side star, Will Sampson, performed an actual exorcism on the set of the second film in 1984. And according to Williams, he went to the set late at night all by himself to do it. And the next day, when everybody came back, they supposedly felt relieved. Unfortunately for Will, he would also die not too long after from a heart-lung transplant. But perhaps more than The Exorcist, or even Poltergeist, 
It was this next movie written by David Seltzer and directed by Richard Donner that was thought to be the most cursed movie of all time. Released June 25th, 1976, this next film was about the strange and mysterious deaths that surrounded an American ambassador. Could the child that he was raising actually be the Antichrist? The devil's own son? Satan's spawn? Bad feelings abounded all facets of this production. In fact, Bob Munger, the advertising executive who pitched producer Harvey Bernhard the concept of the arrival of the Antichrist in the form of a cherubic-looking young boy named Damien, had received an omen himself and warned Bernhard that... The devil doesn't want us to make this picture. We're going to have problems. The film was beset with strange, unexplainable occurrences. During preparations for the movie, lead actor Gregory Peck, who played Robert Thorne, experienced a horrible family tragedy when just two months before the filming of the movie, in June of 75, his 30-year-old son Jonathan shot himself in the head. And literally, on the way to London to begin filming, Gregory's plane was hit by lightning. And if that wasn't enough, a few weeks later, executive producer Mark Newfield boarded a flight from L.A., and his plane was also struck by lightning. And he referred to the experience as... The roughest five minutes I've ever had on an airliner. <laughs> and if that wasn't enough, producer Harvey Bernhard just barely missed being struck by lightning bolt while he was filming in Rome. But the devil's at work, I tell you. The devil! And he uses lightning! Still, production on the Omen lurched forward, at which point Bernhard began wearing a cross to set. At one point, the Omen producers hired a small plane for some aerial filming, but was given over to another client at the last minute. The plane reportedly crashed on takeoff, killing everyone on board. More ominous circumstances seemed to plague the production. If that's not a clear sign of a cursed movie, then perhaps this next incident will change your mind. In the movie, there is a very infamous decapitation scene, and John Richardson, the special effects artist in charge of that gruesome effect, was involved in a terrible car crash after the movie was finished filming. Richardson survived the accident, but unfortunately his girlfriend, who was also in the car, was... Yep, you guessed it, decapitated. And what was the date? Oh, you know, Friday the 13th? And if that's not enough, Richardson recalled later that he saw a sign near the accident site that read, Omen, 66.6 kilometers, in reference to how far they were from a nearby Dutch town. A little on the nose, eh, devil? So what it is about, what, it, what is it about a really terrifying movie that seems to have the power to possess. Does Satan subscribe to The Hollywood Reporter? And when he hears about a movie in production that can excite his followers, he sends one of his demonic minions to be on set chaperone? I don't think so. Far more likely is the idea that perhaps an energy is somehow manifested or created from all of the minds hard at work at bringing a terrifying vision to life. From the writer who toils over the dark research to the actors who try desperately in vain to access such great emotions all the way down to the prop master who experiments incessantly in their attempts to create the best demonic vomit they can. The making of a truly horrifying movie seems to emulate the ancient occult ritual of summoning a thing to life. A tulpa, if you will. It reminds me of the famed Philip experiment, a parapsychology experiment conducted in Canada, Toronto, Ontario. Ontario? Jeez, sorry. <laughs> Ontario? <laughs> Ontario. In the mystical land of in Ontario. The, in the mystical land of Ontario. At a bar called Atlantis. Where all the rats are dead in fountains. I just want to reiterate, hey. we stayed silent. We didn't even correct you. That's how Canadian yes, we are. You did. So Thank you. Polite. Thank you so much. Uh, that's so funny. That set out to determine, now the Philip experiment set out to determine 
whether subjects can communicate with fictionalized ghosts through expectation of human will. The goals were simple, create a fictional character through a purposeful methodology and then attempt to communicate it to communicate with it through séance. And that is exactly what happened. Participants created a detailed history of life for a ghost they decided to name Philip, and then they summoned him. They began feeling a presence, table bought vibrations, breezes, unexplained echoes and rapping sounds which matched responses to questions about Philip's life. At one point the table tilted on a single leg and at other times moved across the room without human contact. Philip had indeed come to life. And maybe that's what's happening here with these cursed movies. At an unconscious level, something is being brought forth to life. Psychic energy is pulled from the cast and crew and manifested. So whether it's The Exorcist, Poltergeist, or The Omen, or any other scary movie that feels all too real, be warned, as the only question that remains is, when you sit down to watch and absorb the experience of the moving pictures, does the energy or curse get transferred to you? I don't know. Why don't you watch all three and find out? <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. And that is the tale of the cursed movies that you are about to watch. So what do you think's going on here, ladies? What What is happening? Is this just happenstance, uh, coincidence, or something? I don't something? think so. Yeah. I believe I you know believe it or bullshit. I believe it. Some, I, that- uh, ma'am, <laughs> ma'am, it's bullshit or believe it. Okay? I'm so damn it, damn it. I thought I had gotten it. Uh, I believe in energy more than anything, and I do believe in you know when energies come together, they can create you know goodness, and then they can also create uh, darkness. So mm-hmm. I believe that there's definitely it's it's too coincidental. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, and you can't have too many coincidences. It's just weird. And also, I just want to point out, they were quick to correct you, but we didn't correct them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just letting that hang. Listen, it's different cultures. Different cultures. That's it. <laughs> oh, my God. Had you guys ever heard of the Philip experiment? No. No, hmm. I don't think I have. Yeah. I mean, so it really, I come back to this every now and then because yeah, we it did really, an episode about this. We did an episode on it, but it really brings forth the idea that, uh, you know, maybe it's not your dead aunt Tilly, or maybe it's not like uh, the ghost being that we knew about being summoned to life, but perhaps it's this, you know, psychic energy from individuals and, and, and heightened emotion that can bring just anything to life. I think there's something to that for sure. Absolutely. I'm curious uh, if we sat down and just randomly picked like s- six movies, just out of- randomly. It doesn't even matter what they are. And then we had Christy uh, do the research. How many car accidents and plane wrecks and lightning strikes and deaths happen around, you know, mm. uh, because yeah, like, sure. I wonder if we're looking at this just because at these films in particular because they're just scary uh, on face value. And I do think that like the church in particular, the Catholic Church had a lot of um uh, uh you know that they, they were felt motivated to n- get people not to see these movies. Mm. So they would say they're cursed or they're bad films of course, which just makes you want to go see it even more. But um I don't know. Like I this it's clearly creepy. And I mean, the fact that there was like so many plane problems on the set of The Omen is insane. First of all, maybe that was just the 70s. I don't know. But um, (laughs) it it is it is it is super, super spooky. And I remember knowing that that little girl who played Carol Ann died when I was a kid. I remember hearing about that. And that really creeped me out. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't know. It is. It's interesting. But I wonder if it's if we just. You know, well, I, Hollywood is a weird place, uh, full of crazy, insane deaths. And I wonder if we could just, if we looked at any movie, we could come up with a with with a, an idea that it might be cursed. Well, you might be right. You know, to just add a little bit to that, I think that 
what could possibly be at play here and something that might happen is this all it takes is for one person to be like, Oh, I'm not sure. I have a, I have a bad feeling about this or this film could be cursed, you know? And as soon as those words are spoken and people sort of latch onto that idea, then they start to give energy to that idea, you know? So especially when you're filming a movie like, and you're talking, I mean, think about filming Poltergeist. You're you're actually like you guys know how it is on a on a set. You know, you're you're trying to like you know debate the ideas that are about to be filmed, and you're and you're trying to you know validate what's actually happened and the reality of the situation. So there's constant talk of like you know possession and 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 Poltergeist activity, and people are like, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and it just I don't know. One thing adds to the other. And the next thing you know, fucking planes are being struck by lightning over and over. Look, I, 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 I've I, been teased I, with research here. And so I just really <laughs> would like us to like narrow down some movies because I mean, I mean, Jerry Maguire, uh, yeah, Jerry Maguire. Tom the Cruise curse. himself is a nightmare. Uh, but like, look at um, throwing back to the 80s, Lamb Before Time. Yeah. That yeah. dinosaur one, the sweet little girl who played Ducky. Uh, was brutally murdered yeah. when she was right. a child. That's right. So it's like there's got to be something dark probably everywhere without anybody mm. noticing. And I just want to research. So I, <laughs> She's really, going to be a dog with a bone now, you guys. I am now. It's just going to be constant emails. About, what about like, let's pick them. Let me do this. Wait, what guys, about you, I, ladies? Can you watch scary movies? or Guys, are we not going to talk about the fact that Ducky was brutally murdered? This is traumatizing. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I'm glossing over that yeah. entirely. Yeah. And I'm going to pretend yeah. I don't know that. It does, Very does. sad. Very yeah. Oh, it's it's terrifying. I can't really think much about it because she, her little face. She's just so cute. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. But, you know, I but, yeah, was by her father. I'll point out. Oh well. God! Oh, my God. <laughs> this is getting what? worse. Oh. You thought oh. that rats and blood was the worst I had in me. It turns out, no, real brutal murder of children. Yeah. Listen, it's the true crime lover in both of us. <laughs> um, you know, for me watching, I loved horror movies in high school, but I think it's because I was still at an age where fear was not real to me, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. I feel like the older I get, the more I'm like, I can't do it. And I certainly went through years where I lived alone and that was like a no go, like absolutely not but now i'm starting to kind of get back into them again but uh yeah it's definitely taken some uh, it's been a journey yeah how about you christy how do you how do you Um, vibe with scary movies here's the thing um in a short answer i don't um (laughs) (laughs) i i'm terrified of many things uh my husband and i have a a veto system a no veto system sorry uh for movie picks because it used to take us hours to agree on a movie so then we're just like one day it's your pick, the next day it's yours, whatever. We're Mark. nerds. We have we have a full Google Excel spreadsheet filled out with all of our picks. So we remember. This is amazing. Um, but the one thing he know he knows he's allowed to pick whatever he wants, but he knows I can't really handle scary, but especially gore. I don't mm. like the gory ones. So I'm not even joking. Right now in our living room, he's going through the Saw series while I record and Amazing. that's what he does when Lauren and I record because it's his only time to get the TV to himself <laughs> right. when he's allowed. Uh, but I don't like scary, but I will say, I think uh, I watched a quiet place not long ago and I'm yeah. obsessed with that movie. I thought that movie was brilliant. So well, great movie. But and again, no, gore. no gore, not really gory. No gore. Yeah. 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 yeah well, you can do the PG 13 <clears throat> ones. Yeah. Yeah. That's more more psychology than gore. I, yeah, I, I like those ones. I tend that way too for horror. Well, and Riley, I had something I gonna, in this oh, that ahead. just gave yeah. me truly gave me pause that I can't get past. Is who honestly puts up a sign that says Omen sixty six point six miles? I mean, come yeah. on, yeah, that, that's well, like, deliberate. No, oh, like absolutely. I've never in my life seen a sign that's like sixty six point anything. It's just miles. Like, so is that just a troll? Someone put that sign up, and that guy happened to see that, or like, <laughs> like come like just no. It's, Omen, it's too much. I know. Well, too much. Omen I thought about M. the two, but o- Omen is at least spelled with two M's yeah, and, and yeah. not just one. But it is weird that it would be 66.6. Like, why so specific, yeah. honestly? Like, right, like, I was thinking you move of, it like I, half a meter up? And just, <laughs> yes, move, move, move the side. Move the side. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Going back to The Quiet Place, Riley, I was thinking of you. I mean, that you know, that was a movie that explored the idea of how much sound can uh, can rattle the senses. And uh, I, I love that movie for that reason. I mean, it's so much of it is the sound and the uh, and the and the the accompaniment and the scores that really totally, you know, just kind of haunt you. Oh, yeah. I love a good sound driven film and something also that makes you aware of how much noise you're actually in all the time. Spin drift and would have would have been actual quiet is instantly by those oh, monsters. Yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> they would have just invaded our practice space and just ripped our heads right off. Noisy, noisy. You know, I, the one thing I said when I first saw that movie was I was like, this is a land with no dogs. Think about that. Because uh, dogs bark, right? Oh, like. Yeah. Yeah, bad dogs do. Good I'd dogs go down and wow. pile it. I wouldn't be able to. I I just be like, all right, eat both of us. Let's just get it over with. <laughs> Let's get it over. <laughs> Let's just get it over with. Uh, well, uh, I think we we're wrapping up another episode of Bigfoot Collectors Club. Uh, Lauren and Christy, you guys are a blast. I feel like we've barely scratched the surface. Yeah. Um, so we'll have to please keep us posted. We're going to follow the podcast <laughs> and keep us posted. If you guys go back to look for that rat fountain, because I really <laughs> want updates. I know. Oh, you'll hear about it in the news when we don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll come oh, back and it'll be 30 years later. That's yeah, that's right. Uh, we'll be 70 when we hear about it. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah, will time we vortex. come back or will doppelgangers come back? Uh, There's a lot of questions. A lot. Or yeah. I think the original you will come back, and then a doppelganger of Lauren comes back. That's how. It, that's how it works. Oh my God! Will they get along? I don't know. God, I hope so. Oh my God! <laughs> would you get along with original me? See, now I've convinced myself I'm a doppelganger. I'm I want just, you all to know I'm we are going to be it. talking about this for a week now. <laughs> I, I think this is the first time a guest has left this podcast truly questioning their identity, so I apologize. <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. It's Look, you're great. doing good work here, guys. You're doing what good we work. Do. Um, uh, could you please let uh, everyone know where they can find your podcast and find you guys? Absolutely. So the podcast is True Crime and Cocktails, Unsolved Mysteries Edition. Uh, You can find that anywhere that you're going to stream a podcast. Um, Launching October 13th. That is our official launch day. Uh, If you want to find us on social media, we're on Facebook and Instagram at True Crime and Cocktails. And we're on Twitter at Not Detectives, because they have a character cap, which is real (laughs) fun. Um, You can also find Christy at Unsolved Christy on both Instagram and Twitter. And you can find me I'm all over the place. None of my accounts match. But on Instagram, I'm at Lauren Elizabeth Ash, and that's the one that I give the most love. Fantastic. Um, all right, guys. Well, you can find us on uh, Bigfoot Collectors Club at on Instagram and Twitter. We are Bigfoot Pod. Uh, Bryce, Riley, anything you want to plug before we go? Yeah, just go get yourself one of those new killer shirts. You guys are going to love it. Yes. And how's the uh, how's the game coming along, Bryce? Good. The game is coming along soon. It will be available this fall. So I will be making a big announcement when it's ready to purchase. But uh, we expect the first 500 units to get here in the next couple weeks. And then it is on. If you're curious about uh, Dirty Picture Cover Up, just go to the DPCU game dot com and sign up today and you'll be the first to get one of our initial orders. Fantastic. It's honestly the best game ever. It's the most fun you'll have with your clothes on or off. I don't know. Play however you want. (laughs) But seriously, what a game. What a game. Uh, Riley, what about you? Any plugs? I don't know. Follow me on Instagram at Peace Drone. I'm trying to finally be on Instagram now, so it's been fun. I like it. And yeah. uh, we, I just want to also mention, too, uh, we're getting lots of questions about the video. It's still happening. Don't it worry. Is. It's going to happen. It might just take a little longer than we expected, but we got a lot of great stuff, so that's still going to happen, we promise you. Um, and then also, I just wanted to give a little shout out to a podcast uh, called uh, Lost, Found, and Rewound. Uh, it's a movie podcast uh, created by friends of the show. Uh, I just guessed on it this week talking about horror movies, specifically both versions of The Wicker Man and Midsummer, which is one of my favorite recent movies. So go check that out and support that podcast, please. And then finally, uh, do us a favor. Go to Apple Podcasts. Give us a five star review, and uh, and, and and if you if you say something nice, we might read it right here on the show, like I'm about to do. The podcast I wanted before podcasts were a thing. Five stars by Film Prof. 
I discovered this gem last spring when I appeared as a recommendation, as it appeared as a recommendation based on my obsession with the paranormal. I'm a 60 year old college film professor slash musician and really wish a program like this was around when I was younger. Apart from coast to coast, I was in a literal paranormal desert. Michael, Bryce, and Riley, and guests, we'll say Lauren and Christy, make my day every day with witty banter and storytelling. I highly recommend recommend this podcast. Oh, oh my that's gosh. Great. Wow. Prof, that's great. That's rad. Awesome. And uh, yeah, I know. So many, it happens to us too. All these Marvel movies that I wish had been around when I was a kid. You know, the, 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 the future generations are always spoiled with the things we wanted when we were young. Uh, all right, everybody. I want to thank Lauren and Christy one more time for being our guests. Uh, stick around uh, with us all October long. We're going to have more terrifying tales from zombie Bigfoot's Crypt to Crypt. Check out the shirts. Until next time, good night. And specifically you, Christy. Go get regressed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah, that's, that's our tag. <laughs> that's for you. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, guys. No. Bigfoot Collectors Club is produced by Riley Bray. Our theme song is Come Alone by Sun Eaters, courtesy of Lotus Pool Records. If you like the show, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps get the podcast to more listeners. To support the show, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash Bigfoot Collectors Club and unlock multiple reward episodes every month.